My name is Leslie Fisher. I'm based out of Southern California. For 27 years, I've been keynoting and feature speaking at education technology conferences. Well, let me back up. I was never a teacher in a classroom. I'm a struggling learner, so I never wanted to be a teacher. And when technology boomed, I fell in love with technology. And all I've wanted to do since then is share as many engaging things that I feel could help a teacher be a teacher. And like I said, I've been at this 27 years and every panel company on this floor has reached out to me and said, will you show our stuff? And I just never felt from my voice as a geek and not as much as an educator in the classroom, was there a board with enough features on it that I could be me and do a demo. And then last February at a conference, this board was in a booth that I was demoing and it was so transparent to interact with that I wanted to learn more. And Norma, who knows me from years ago in the classroom, uh, she did a great demo and I was like, holy smokes, I think I can actually demo this board. So you're not gonna see me teacher talk. What you're gonna see me is nut and bolt talk. And also talk about the idea that me as a presenter needing to run in somewhere and present, I'm sure as an educator, you might not be in the same room each time. You might need to bounce around. I just wanna show you what's hiding on this board. And that's my plan. Caveat, it's the first time I've done this demo. So there might be some entertainment. And the other thing is the internet here is fantastic. I hope everyone caught my sarcasm on that second part. Are you guys ready? You probably see that I'm holding this card. I am logged out on this board. And one of the things that I absolutely loved about this, imagine this could even be region-wide, district-wide, school-wide. Let's say you're a teacher on special assignment, a music teacher, and you go to one room for an hour, then you gotta go to another room for an hour, then you gotta go to another room for an hour, and then you're gonna have to plug in your computer each time, make sure it's all working. This card has all of my services on it. So now I'm logged in as me. So when this was set up, I, as me, had a web portal. And that web portal asked me, what services am I running? As a presenter supporting all over the world, I have both Google services and Office 365 services I need to run. And you'll notice that I actually have my Google Drive here and I even have my OneDrive here. And I configured that all through the website. So if you wanted to actually interact with this this way, you could absolutely do that. However, I'm gonna click here on the home button. That's gonna take me back to my main screen. And you're gonna notice here, I have this guy. This is running the Android operating system. And because it is, I'm able to head to the Play Store and I'm able to come in here and I'm able to download whatever apps can work on Android. So now what I have, as you'll notice here, I have everything from my Google services down here. And I also have my Microsoft services down here. And I wanna point out, even this, this computer is not in this scenario yet. I'll show that to you in a second. This is entirely computerless and this is board only. So if I wanted to come in here and I wanted to share with you something from my Google Drive, I can do that without even touching my computer. So I'll tap on this. This is gonna open up my Google Doc. And now we're looking at my entire outline. I'm curious who's already like, oh, that's pretty cool and that's pretty handy. So I can come in here. I don't even have to touch the computer whatsoever. I do a lot of uh, Microsoft talking. So I just feel like I have to show this. So I'm gonna head back home. We're now gonna head into PowerPoint because I do all my presentations in PowerPoint. Yesterday, I did a presentation called What Just Happened? And this was all the new and cool features that will say no thanks. And here is my presentation and I can come through here and I can go through and I'm able to display this once again, no computer involved whatsoever. So even me doing booth demos, I was talking to Norma. She's like, in the future, we can roll this into a different booth. You hit the card, you don't even have to touch your computer if you don't need to. Is this making sense so far, my friends? So any questions? So you'll notice that I keep hitting the home button here I always like to point out when there's another way to do something and there's two lines on each side of the board. So you'll notice when I do this, it remembers the last three places I've been, but I also have here, I have a home option. And then that will take me right back to my home screen. Any questions so far, are we good? So built into the board, Google services, 
Microsoft services, no computer needed. However, let's say you wanted to use a computer. The first thing that I ever time I used a BenQ monitor, I actually came up and I plugged it right into this USB-C and it instantly showed up. Not only did it instantly show up, I've never touched the panel before at this point. Out of curiosity, I went, here comes my screen. I'm like, if I can double tap on a folder and scroll, I'm gonna lose it. And I could absolutely double tap on a folder. I could scroll and I could even map a keyboard and I could type on the panel without me ever having to touch that computer whatsoever. I wanted to try that for you, but guess what? The internet is awesome. How many of you have awesome internet at your school that works all the time? You're catching my sarcasm, right? We weren't planning to show this, but I want to show this to you. This is a connector that BenQ makes. So I can't get this device on the internet. The internet's being a jerk. My Mac is just in a, a spinning wheel. Technically, I don't need to worry about that right now if I was gonna do, use just the board, but ones if I really need that. What this thing will do is this thing will jump on the internet, realize the board that's nearby, and then hook my computer up to it. So this is the part of the demo I had no plans to do that I just tried five minutes ago. Wish me luck. You ready? So I'm gonna plug this in. This is the InstaShare app. And if our internet was a little more friendly, I would be looking at a list of the computer right here and then I would join to it. It isn't, but just like a real world school, you might not need to worry about that because if all you need to do is display your screen, you can use that little puck and you can display it there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to bounce out of that because I wanna show you InstaShare on the panel. This was another thing that when I saw this board that I got really surprised about. InstaShare supports connectivity to pretty much anything. So if you're geeky, it's running Miracast, it's running Chromecast, which is also Miracast, it's running AirPlay on it. It's running all the services and I could actually have multiple devices on it. So if I come up in here into my iPhone and I go into my casting, the bummer is, and part of the sizzle that I wanted to show you, is if, if my Mac was able to connect, the Mac would be right here and my iPhone would be right here. And when I'm doing things like when I did the demo for Merge, I was a, I'm able to show my Merge Cube while I'm able to show the Mac and it's just so cool. You'll notice right here, we have this little icon and if I had running happy internet in my class, I could come in here and I could even say float the window, split the screen. Norma, are you gonna try to jump on? Is, is it acting up too on yours a little? Oh, we'll find out. So give it a whirl. It's okay, we could talk it through. But what's really neat, if you take a look here, let's imagine the internet's better and I have multiple computers up here. I can come in here and I could hide certain screens and show certain screens. So if I wanted to bring up all my students' screens, great. And if all my students' uh, internet connection wasn't working, guess what I could do? I can hand them one of those, they press one button, and then they log in just like that. Is that making sense, my friends? Are we liking that so far? Cool. Let's go back home and let me show you a couple things that we can do with some apps. Uh, I am sure you have used Chrome before. One of the features that you get when you set up that panel I showed you where you sign up your Google services and your Microsoft services is it lets you set bookmarks. And you could have been in a different room down the hall. Your bookmarks will follow you. However you left the screen, the screen will be there. So I was prepping earlier and this was the bookmark I had. And if, if you saw where the apps were, there's a choice to display all my bookmarks. This is my ISTE page and this is the toolbar. So the toolbar has a bunch of choices to it. I think we all know what that is. If not, I commend you for being at a technology conference. So kudos to you. We have everything from the ability, this will let me move things around, I even have some basic tools in this toolbar. I think if you stare at it long enough, you can figure out what some of those tools are. I even have a writing tool and I have this camera tool. I even have a recording tool. I'm gonna head right back here to this and I am gonna go to my schedule. So we happen to be right here right now. And you'll notice the next thing that I'm doing is I'm going to be heading to the Magic School booth where they also have a BenQ uh, board. 
and I'm going to be doing a demo there. So I'm gonna use this as an example. Let's say this is an educator on a web page, uh, and they wanted to capture this image. Uh, so what I can do is I'm gonna come here to the camera, and you're gonna notice that I can take a screenshot of the whole thing, but you'll notice also I can say grab an image. It's going to say start now, and now you'll notice that I have this selection area. And one of the fun things that they showed me, I know I'm selecting an abyss, but I could actually come here, take my two fingers on each side, and it will automatically grab it to the area. Now that I've done that, you'll notice this is screenshot, this is save, this is to send it to something called EasyWrite. So I'm gonna give this a tap, boom, it is now in EasyWrite. And this is an application which I think BenQ would describe as your digital whiteboard that can do all sorts of things within BenQ. Not only does it exist on the board, it is also an app that can be used on a computer. So you have access to it there as well. So there's a couple of features I wanna show you. I think we know this one, I think we know this one. Uh, and I think we know this one. What the heck is that item right there? What this will do is this will look for the text in the item and it has now created text that I can actually edit. So I'm gonna come through here, I don't need that anymore. I'm gonna hit the trash can, we got that. So now I could tap this, I can move this around if I wanted to. You'll notice I can change the font size. So it goes from something that's just living on a page to something I can edit. But Translate, we preloaded Spanish, but it has a choice of piles of different languages. And I could keep clicking on this if I wanted to and had more languages loaded. And I could load more things in here if I wanted to. So another nice little feature that you can do. You can also do some crazy things. Like if you had a YouTube video showing, you can split the screen. You have a web browser on one screen. You have Easy Write on the other screen and drag the YouTube video onto the Easy Write screen and you don't have any of the ads or any of the other stuff going on on the web browser. It's just sitting there in Easy Write waiting for you. So this app has a lot of power to it. I want to show you a couple other things. In the corner where I've been blocking, you'll notice that there's a plus sign because that can add pages. So that page went away, but technically it didn't. It's just still there. I'm adding some space. Let's come in here, let's click. We have a lot of different wallpapers. If I have anyone teaching the maths, there you go. Uh, the graphs, there you go. I'm gonna show you what I studied when I was in school and it was that. So if you, for example, wanted to have music and remember, all I have to do is look for the toolbar uh, and I can go ahead and I can write on it with no problem. Oh, the toolbar's moved down here. So I have all of this. Let me add another page. But let's come in here and let's just go to a solid background. Let's clear that out. All right, we're good there. Let me show you a couple other things that are hiding in this application. I think once again, you're probably gonna know text tools or whatnot. We have some basic drawing tools. These two right here are pretty cool. If I give this a click, webcam, image, document. This is bringing in a document from the EasyWrite app. I could play something. There's a music file, link, YouTube. And if I come through here, this is some awesome stuff in here. As a, as a Microsoft person, that's Microsoft, um, that's, some, that's Microsoft Math. And if you haven't seen it before, do you guys know PhotoMath? This is like PhotoMath gone crazy. It will give you the solution, but more importantly, it'll say, let's show you some videos on how you can learn how to solve this on your own. Let's give you some other solutions. Microsoft Math is, is absolutely great. So I have some fun ones in here. So what I wanna show is, well, just for fun, we'll do this. So this is a scoreboard. So maybe I'm going to ask students questions in class. I can start the scoreboard. As one team gets things correct, great. If I need to show something else, I can go up here and you'll notice it's right over here. Anytime I can bring it back. Ryan, how am I doing? Am I doing okay? All right. Like he'd say, this sucks, Leslie, what are you doing? So the one last thing I wanna show you, I'm gonna come back here. I thought this was really cool. I'm gonna bring up this, these uh, teams, we're gonna say three teams start. And now I have three different ports. And you're gonna notice that if I come in here and try to write, it's not gonna let me head here on the other side. I do have an eraser, but I also have an eraser here if I wanted to. Let's see how I do. So now what I'm gonna do, so I could have three students come up here and work individually. They can't draw into the other area. But a nice thing I can do is I have this Q&A option. So in this Q&A option, I'm gonna do something basic. 
And so now I can put anything I want in here. And then when I say set, it's gonna go across all of the screens. And so once I do that, I can have students come up and they can come in here and fill out the answer if they wanted. You want to? Well, I am dyslexic, but I feel confident with this one. Yeah, I showed that. And I messed up because I, when I erased it, it, it bummed it out. Woo! I only had, like, I'm already five minutes over, and I wanted to show you some of these features from the teacher side. But like I said, from the geek side, I don't know if there's another board out here that is gonna offer me all the services that it does without even having to touch my computer. And, and that's a pretty cool thing. Uh, I don't think I did too bad for my first time out with a excellent internet connection. Um, I have a pile of BenQ friends that if you have any questions, they'd be more than happy uh, to answer. So thank you for your time. I hope you like this, this board, because I know I do. So thank you everyone, appreciate you being here.